Well, I sort of announced it last week that for the next three weeks we're going to be dealing with uh, black history according to the Bible. You know, it's sort of tradition in Israel, the month of February considered Black History Month. And so we try to uh, give you black history according to the Bible. But in the Bible, you won't find the word Negro. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what you will find is the word Israelite. Amen. And we are going to show you for the next three weeks that the true Israelites are a dark race of people. That is the title of the lesson. The true Israelites are a dark race of people. Because there is some controversy as to who the true Israelites are. You know, you had a people that the world acknowledged as the Israelites or the Jews. Then you have black people like us. We said, no, we are the real Israelites. We are the Israelites or the Jews that the Bible talks about. Jew just mean that you came out of one of the tribes of Israel, which was Judah. Mm -hmm. So when you said Jew, Israelite, you're talking one and the same. So now, if you want to get the real history of the Israelites, then you have to get it from the Bible. Because after 70 AD, the Israelites' history became so distorted until you just will not get it out of a traditional history book. You gotta use the Bible, and we're gonna use some history as well. But you might wonder, why is it important who the real Israelites are? Well, we're gonna read a few scriptures here before we really get into identifying who Israel is. We're gonna read a few scriptures what the Lord said about the Israelites. Because you do need to know who the real Israelites are. And I'm gonna tell you this. If you don't get Israel right, it's a whole lot of stuff in the Bible you ain't gonna get right. That's right. Especially when you talk about end time prophecy, you gonna just about mess up all of that. That's right. And the reason I know that is cause I see them doing it every day. Because, uh, you know, t uh, typically it's said when the Jews go back to the land, then that will be the end of the world. And they're right. But the thing is, they got the wrong people for the Jews. Because they said the Jews went back to the land in 1948. That's right. And we still waiting on the end of the world. <laughs> so that tells you something flawed about that right away, doesn't it? Because you got to get Israel right to understand end time prophecy. You just have to get it right. So we going to identify because we need to know about ourselves. You know, this lesson is really for Israel. It's really for us so that we can identify ourselves. Everybody know who they are with the exception of us. We are the only people walking around on the planet that change identity every generation. I see it all the time. My grandfather, he was colored. My daddy was a Negro. I was an Afro-American. And my son, he's black. Every generation, we have been something else. Any other people, whatever his granddaddy was, that's what the daddy was, and the son was, and the grandson was. Every other people. But when it comes down to us, because we know nothing about our history, our true history, then we change every generation. That shows that you really don't know your history. And the reason you don't know is they don't teach it to you in school, and the world has distorted your history. But we're going to straighten it all out these next three weeks because we're going to identify the real Israelite using the Bible 
as well as some history. But as I said earlier, I'm going to just show you a few things that the Lord said about the Israelites before we began to identify them. Let's go to Romans chapter 3. And we're going to begin reading at verse 1. Romans 3, and we'll pick it up at verse 1. Romans 3, and we'll begin at verse 1. 3 and 1. Now, this is a letter that Paul wrote to the Gentiles. And Paul, by the way, was an Israelite. People, some people don't even know that. And he must have said it about three or four different times in the Bible. That shows you they're not reading the Bible. Because he made it very clear that he was the Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. Right. But you talk to people, they seem to think that he was a Gentile simply because he was an apostle to the Gentile. But now Paul was an Israelite. And this is what uh, he said to the Romans. We're going to read some other stuff that he said to the Romans as well before we get out of this lesson today. But start reading at uh, Romans chapter 3 and began reading at verse 1. Romans 3 and 1. Go ahead and read. What advantage then have the Jew? Uh-huh. Or what profit is there of circumcision? Now he asked the question here. What advantage have the Jew or what profit in their circumcision? Go ahead and read. Much every way. Now he said much in every way. Go ahead. Chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Now you know what the oracles are. Those are God's divine revelations. Right. So now Paul is saying to the Gentiles here that God gave his divine revelation unto the Jews. So now if you want to get God's divine revelation, then you got to go to the source that he gave it to. That's right. And believe me, you are going to have to go to the source that he gave it to. Because if you go to any other source, you're going to get it all wrong. Because I listen to them all the time and they got it all wrong. Truly, they got it wrong. So now he gave... Israel, or the Jews, his divine revelation. Let's go now to Amos chapter 2. And we'll begin reading at verse 10. Amos 2, and we'll pick it up at verse 10. Amos 2 and 10. 2 and 10. So you would, uh, he had Amos to write here about Israel. And we talking about natural born Israelites too. We ain't talking about no spiritual Israel, you know, because you have a few people out there, they've, they've found out that it meant something to be an Israelite. So they try to spiritualize Israel away, you know, spiritual Israel. God ain't dealing with natural Israel anymore. He's dealing with spiritual Israel. I'm going to tell you, God's still dealing with natural Israel. But natural Israel got to be spiritual Israel in order for God to deal with them. But he's still dealing with natural Israel. And Paul made that very clear in the ninth chapter of Romans. He said, my came and according to the flesh, mm -hmm. to whom were given the promises and, 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 and the laws and the covenants and everything was given unto them. He didn't, God didn't exclude nobody. Let me make this very clear. This, this lesson is not about race. This lesson is about the facts that are written in the Bible. That's what it's about. I'm not in opposition to anybody. I'm just trying to make certain that we keep everything in line with Scripture, and that's what we are going to do. Now, let's go to uh, 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 Amos chapter 2 and pick it up at verse 10. Amos 2 and 10. Go ahead and read, bro. Also, I brought you up from the land of Egypt. Now, who, who is it that he brought up out of the land of Egypt? He Israel. brought the Israelites out of the land of Egypt. Did it by the hand of Moses. Go ahead and read on. And led you 40 years through the wilderness uh -huh. to possess the land of the Amorite. Go ahead. And I raised up of your sons for profit. Now, he said, I, he's talking about Israelites here. Right. Natural born, that's what he brought out of Egypt, isn't it? He said, now, he said, I raised up your sons for prophets. And every prophet was an Israelite, That's every right. single one. That's right. Why? Because the Lord raised them up for prophets. And he gave them his divine revelations. And the reason he gave them his divine revelations is so that they may pass it on to the rest of the children of Adam. It was not 
just for them. It was for everybody. You know, this is the protocol that God chose. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he raised up a people, and this people was, he, he was going to give them his divine revelation. Mm -hmm. Then they was to give it to everybody else. Go ahead and finish that verse. And of your young men, for Nazarites. Uh-huh. Is it not even thus, O ye children of Israel, said the Lord? So now the Lord said, you know, the people that he brought out of Egypt, which was Israelites, he said, I raised up your sons for prophets. Mm -hmm. And as I said earlier, every single prophet was an Israelite, every one. That's right. Let's go now to uh, uh, Amos, not Amos, but Matthew chapter 10. And we first going to pick it up at verse 1, Matthew chapter 10. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Later, Jesus came in the flesh, and, and he began his ministry, and he chose 12 apostles. And every one of them was an Israelite, every single one. Matthew chapter 10, and we'll begin reading at verse 1. Matthew 10, pick it up at verse 1. 10 and 1. Okay, go ahead and read that first verse, and then I want you to skip. Go ahead and read. And when he had called unto him his 12 disciples, uh -huh. he gave them power against unclean spirits. Now, he said when he called unto him his 12, and they were all Israelites. He called it. Did you finish that verse? No. Okay, go ahead and finish. To cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Now, skip down to uh, 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 verse 5. Go ahead and read. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, uh -huh. Go not into the way of the Gentiles. Now he said, don't go in the way of the Gentiles. I'm going to get to the Gentiles. You know, I'm going to raise up a, a apostle to go and teach the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. However, he sent Peter first to the first Gentile. That was Cornelius. Mm -hmm. But then he was going to raise up Paul to minister unto the Gentiles. But he said to the twelve, do not go in the way of the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read on. And into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. Uh-huh. But go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now he said, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In other words, he's going to give this to Israel. That's right. Then Israel would give it to everybody else. So now he said, don't go in the way of the Gentiles, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Go ahead and read on. And as ye go, Preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He said, and as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So now, you know, uh, 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 he raised up the 12, mm -hmm. and he told them to go unto uh, Israel. And he said, don't go in the way of the Gentiles. But now when he was ready to send somebody to the Gentiles, mm -hmm. who did he send? He sent an Israelite That's to right. them. He sent Peter first, because Peter was among these 12 mm -hmm. here. Let's go to, uh, let's go to uh, uh, Romans chapter 11, and we'll pick it up at verse 1. So now he gave Israel his divine revelation, and when he was ready to minister unto the Gentiles, then he sent an Israelite. You know, you gave Israel your divine revelation, so now who are you going to send? You're going to send the one that you gave your divine revelations to, and that was Israel. Just want you to understand that you do need to understand who Israel is right. because God gave them his divine revelation. Let's start reading here at Romans chapter 11. And we'll begin reading at verse 1. Romans 11 and pick it up at verse 1. 11 and 1. Go ahead and read. I say then, hath God cast away his people? Uh -huh. God forbid. Now this is Paul the Israelite here. And he asked the question. Have God cast away his people? He said, God forbid. Listen what he said. Go ahead and read. For I also am an Israelite uh -huh. of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. Now, he, he put this on a natural thing, didn't mm -hmm. he? You understand what I'm saying? Right. Of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. Because, mm -hmm. you know, you have people say that God have cast Israel away. Mm -hmm. You know, he ain't dealing with Israel anymore. He is dealing with the church. Now, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. That's right. Israel is the church. That's not right. was, is. That's right. That's right. Teach. If you go and read Romans, not Romans, but Acts chapter 7, mm -hmm. it will tell you that Moses was with the church in the wilderness. Right. Who was the church in the wilderness? Israel. It was Israel. That's right. 
God didn't exclude nobody, however. He grafted the Gentiles into the church. That's right. But when he started his church, he started it with Israelites, mm -hmm. natural born Israelites. That is how it is. You understand right. what I'm saying? I'm a New Testament Christian. Well, where is Acts chapter 7? <laughs> New Testament. That's right. So now he started the church and he started with Israel. Mm -hmm. And Paul asked the question, have God cast away his people? He said, God forbid, for I am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. Go ahead and read. God have not cast away his people, which he foreknew. But it said, God have not cast away his people, which he foreknew. Skip down to, uh, skip down to verse 13. Go ahead and read. For I speak to you Gentiles in as much as I am the apostle of the Gentiles. I magnify mine office. So now, Lord started out with Israel. Mm. He raised up uh, uh, Israel to be prophets. Mm. Then when Jesus came in the flesh, he chose the twelve. And they were all Israelites. Mm -hmm. And he told them, do not go in the way of the Gentile, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. When he was ready to minister unto the Gentiles, who did he send? He sent pa Peter first, mm -hmm. an Israelite. Mm -hmm. Then when he was ready to minister to them on a wholesale basis, he sent Paul, an Israelite. Right. Everybody knew that. You understand what I'm saying? It, it wasn't until Israel got kicked out of their land and their history got distorted when they lost their identity that everybody got lost. But, it, but back then, everybody knew who Israel was and everybody knew that Israel had the word of God. Everybody knew that. They knew if they wanted to get the true word of God that they had to go to an Israelite. Nobody knows that now. But it's written right here in the book. That's right. Let's go now to, uh, I just wanted to show you that. Now let's go and look at the origin of the Israelites. Let's go to Genesis chapter 25, and we'll pick it up at verse 19. I just wanted you to understand that so that you will understand that this people that's called Israelites, God chose them. He started his church with them. He chose them to be prophets. He chose them to be apostles. And when he was ready to teach everybody else, he sent an Israelite to do it. That's right. You read Acts chapter 10 and Acts chapter 11. When he was, he sent Peter the Israelite. He had the angel mm -hmm. to go and tell Cornelius. God had the angel. Now go tell Cornelius to go and send for one Simon Peter. Mm -hmm. And he will tell you what it is that you ought if to do. That's right. He could have just as easily sent the angel onto Cornelius and tell him what he ought to do. Mm -hmm. But that is not the protocol. Mm -mm. The protocol is he give it to Israel and Israel give it to everybody else. And you think you don't need to know who Israel is. Mm. I'm going to tell you right now, if you don't get it from Israel or get it from somebody that got it from Israel, you're going to get it wrong. That's right. That is the people that he gave. Don't tell me nothing about what, what the Gentiles are doing. They're the one that gave you Christmas, Good Friday, and Easter, and going to heaven. Find right. any of it in the Bible. That's right. The book That's even right. said by the mouth of Jeremiah that they was going to come, that they was going to come and bow before the Lord mm -hmm. and say, Lord, our, our fathers have inherited lies. That's right. Right. God gave this thing to the Israelites, and you better find out who they are so you can get it right. Because mm -hmm. you don't, if you don't find out who they are, you're going to get it all wrong. He told you that he gave his divine revelations unto you. That is what the apostle to the Gentiles said now. And God himself said that I raised up your sons mm -hmm. to be prophets. That's right. And Jesus came in the flesh, and he chose the 12 Israelites and sent them out to minister first to Israel and then to everybody else. That's, right. That's God's protocol, people. Now, let's find out who, who these Israelites are. Let's go to Genesis chapter 25, and we're going to pick it up at verse 19. And if it was any other way, I'd tell that too. When I stand up here, I read the Bible. That's right. If it hits me, I read the Bible. Amen. You understand what I'm saying? I'm going to tell it right. Because mm -hmm. right. I ain't going to put my salvation on the line. 
just out of pride. You understand what I'm saying? But we, we, we are reading here, aren't we? That's right. Okay, I just want to make sure we read. Because I, I don't want to stand up here and give you my opinion of nothing. If I have an opinion, I keep it to myself. Because I, I know how much my opinion is worth. With the right amount of money, it'll buy me a cup of coffee. But I better have the right amount of money or it won't get me that. That's right. That's right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just stand up here and we're going to go with the Bible. That's right. So when, when it's all said and done, if you got a problem, then your problem going to be with the Bible. That's right. It will not be with Brother Daniel. Don't even bring it to me. Let's start reading at, at Genesis chapter 25, because we're going to identify who these Israelites are. Genesis chapter 25, and we're going to begin reading at verse 19. Genesis chapter 25, pick it up at verse 19. Okay, go ahead and read. And these are the generation of Isaac, mm -hmm. Abraham's son. You know, Ab Abraham, he had uh, uh, a son, Isaac, and he also had a son, Ishmael. And then uh, Abraham wanted Ishmael to get the blessing. Ishmael, by the way, is the father of the Arabs. Mm -hmm. And he wanted Ishmael to get the blessing. But the Lord said, no, your wife, Sarah, going to have a son. Even though she's 90 years old, she's going to have a son. And you 99, and you're going to make a son. <laughs> and I'm going to make my covenant with him and with his seed after him. So now here we have Isaac, Abraham's son, the one that the Lord made the covenant with. Go ahead and read. Abraham begot Isaac. Uh -huh. And Isaac was 40 years old when he took Rebekah to wife. Go ahead. The daughter of Bethuel, the Syrian of Padanaram, the sister to Laban, the Syrian. Uh -huh. And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife because she was barren. Go ahead. And the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, conceived. Go ahead. And the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. Now, she was pregnant with twins. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the children even struggled together within her. You know, this is where the, 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 the struggle started with Israel and mm -hmm. Edom. You know, they, they think it started during the civil rights movement or something. No, no. It started in the womb. That's, That's where right. it started at. That's right. Way back some 3,500 years ago, that's where the struggle started. And they've been struggling ever since. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, read. And the Lord said unto her, uh -huh. Two nations are in thy womb, Go ahead. and two manner of people shall be separated from thy bow. See what the Lord said? Now you know you're pregnant, and you're going to have two different nations and two different manner of people. And they are distinctively different. Make no mistake about it. They are two different nations, and they are two different amount of people. One look like me, and the other one look like the man that you called you. Mm -hmm. And notice I said that you called you. I didn't say that it was you. You called him that. Because your history has been distorted. You are the real Jew. We're going to show you that. But that is these two different nations and these two different manner of people. Go ahead and read on. And the one people shall be stronger than the other people. Uh -huh. And the elder shall serve the younger. Go ahead. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. Uh -huh. And the first came out red, all over like a hairy garment. Go ahead. And they called his name Esau. Go ahead and read. And after that came his brother out, and his hand took hold on Esau's heel. And his name was called Jacob. Uh -huh. And Isaac was threescore year old, years old when she bare them. Now, let's go and identify who these uh, uh, children of Esau is mm -hmm. and the children of uh, 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 Jacob. Mm -hmm. Let's go first to Genesis chapter 36. And we'll pick it up at verse 8. Genesis chapter 36. And we'll begin reading at verse 8. 36 and 8. 36 and 8. First, we're going to deal with the children of Esau. Genesis 36 and 8. Okay, go ahead and read. Thus dwelt Esau in Mount Seir. Uh -huh. Esau is Edom. Esau is Edom. Go ahead and read. 
And these are the generations of Esau, the father of the Edomites in Mount Seir. So now one of the nations, they are the Edomites. But you don't hear that name anymore, do you? No. But I guarantee you they are still around. Mm -hmm. Because the book even talks about in the last days what Edom is going to do. You understand what I'm saying? So they're around. You just don't hear about them anymore. They sort of disappeared from the page. They didn't disappear. The name disappeared. Mm -hmm. They're still around. Now, let's deal with Jacob. Let's go to Genesis chapter 35 and pick it up at verse 9. 35 and 9. Okay, go ahead and read. And God appeared unto Jacob mm -hmm. again when he came out of Padanaram and blessed him. Go ahead. And God said unto him, mm -hmm. Thy name is Jacob. Go ahead. Thy name shall not be called Jake, called any more Jacob, but no. Israel shall be thy name. Now, and so now, go ahead and finish that. And he called his name Israel. And he called his name Israel. So now, out of Jacob came the Israelites. But let's go to uh, let's 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 go to uh, 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 Genesis chapter forty nine and pick it up at verse one. So now. Out of, out of one of them came uh, the Edomites. Mm -hmm. That's out of Esau. That's right. Then God changed Jacob's name from Jacob to Israel, mm -hmm. and out of him came the Israelites. Okay, start reading at Genesis chapter 49 and begin at verse 1. 49 and 1. Go ahead and read. And Jacob <clears throat> called his sons and said, uh -huh. Gather yourselves together that I may tell you that which shall befall you in the last days. Now, Jacob had 12 sons, mm -hmm. and out of those 12 sons came the 12 tribes of Israel. Go ahead and read. Gather yourselves together and hear, ye sons of Jacob, and hearken unto Israel your father. Now, skip down to uh, verse 28. Go ahead and read. <clears throat> All these are the 12 tribes of Israel, uh -huh. and this is it that their father spake unto them and blessed them, every one according to his blessing. He blessed them. So now, out of Jacob came the Israelites. Mm -hmm. And if you are not out of one of these tribes, you are not an Israelite. That's right. You know, because they, they, you know, they, they, and you know, they, they use uh, the, the, the term, you know, well, well, you know, uh, the, the, the Jews, uh, see, these, you are, y'all Jews, mm -hmm. y'all black Jews, but then you got white Jews. No, you don't. You got to be out of one of these 12 tribes mm -hmm. to be an Israelite. Mm -hmm. And to be a Jew, you got to come out of the tribe of Judah. That's right. And all of these people, they were black people. Mm -hmm. Every one of them. So now, if you're not out of one of these 12 tribes, then you're not an Israelite. And if you're not out of Judah, you're not a Jew. Right. You, you can be an Israelite, but you're not a Jew. You got to come out of Judah in order to be a Jew. Now, let's go to, uh, let's back up now to uh, uh, Genesis chapter 10. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Genesis 10, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. We're going to deal a little bit here with some other people's history, and that's going to help us identify who Israel is. Genesis chapter 10, and we began reading at verse 1. Now, Noah had three sons, and out of these three sons, the whole earth was populated. Your genealogy go back to one of these sons. I don't care who you are. Your genealogy go back to one of these sons. First, we're going to read about Japheth a little bit here. Then we're going to read about one of Noah's other sons, Ham. Start reading at 10 and 1. Go ahead and read. Now, these are the generations of the sons of Noah, uh -huh. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. <laughs> Shem, Ham, and Japheth. And the whole earth was populated from these three boys here. Go ahead and read. And unto them were sons born after the flood, uh -huh. the sons of Japheth. Gomer and Magog and Madai and Javan and Tubal and Meshach and Tyrus. Uh -huh. And the sons of Gomer, Ashkenaz and Riphath and Turgamah. Uh -huh. And the sons of Javan, Elisha, Tarshish, Kittim and Dudanim. Mm -hmm. By these were the isles of the Gentiles divided in their lands, everyone after his tongue, after their families and their nations. So now what is a Gentile? 
a Gentile is a descendant of Japheth. That's right. And when you do a little research, you will find out that these are the people that are called Caucasians, or white people as we call them today. These are the Gentiles. There is no such thing as a black Gentile. No. <laughs> no such thing. You understand what I'm saying? Because I know what you heard. You heard either you're a Jew or a Gentile. Yeah. No, you're not. You had to be a Jew, you had to come out of, of the, the tribe of Judah. That's right. To be a Gentile, you came out of Japheth's son, I, I, I mean, out, out of Ham's son, Japheth. Out of Noah's son. Noah's son, I'm trying That's to right. say, Japheth. That's right. And you still had Ham. He ain't no Gentile. No. He a Hamite. That's right. So now, who are the Gentiles? They are the people that came out of Japheth. That's who a Gentile okay. is. Go ahead and read. Six. Uh-huh. And the sons of Ham, Cush. Now, Mi he said the sons of Ham now. Mm -hmm. Cush. Go ahead and read. Mizraim. Uh-huh. And Foot and Canaan. Now, he said uh, uh, Cush, Mizraim, and Foot and Canaan. Let's go and read something here out of the encyclopedia here. Let's start first here at... Uh, Universal Standard Encyclopedia, volume 11. And we're going to read from page 4128. I want you to read what's underlined in red there. Give them the subtitle. Ham. Ham. Go ahead and read. Ham fathered four sons, uh -huh. the progenitors of the southern peoples of the earth. Now, he said he fathered four sons, the progenitor, which means the forefather of the southern people of the earth, it says here. Go ahead and read. Cush became the ancestors, ancestor of the Ethiopians. Now, he said Cush became the ancestor of the Ethiopians. We're going to go and read a little bit about Cush in a little while, but go ahead and... Uh, Read some more. Mizraim of the Egyptians. Now he said Mizraim of the Egyptians. Go ahead and read. Canaan of the Canaanites. Uh-huh. The pre-Israelite inhabitants of Palestine. Go ahead and read. And foot of an ancient people inhabiting Libya. Uh-huh. In the Psalms, Egypt is referred to several times as the land of Ham. Go ahead. Evidently because of this biblical genealogy. Now we're going to deal with this ham, this son here, Cush, a little bit. Because this said that he was the father of the Ethiopians, mm -hmm. it said, didn't it? Right. And I'm going to show you what the word Ethiopia means. Mm -hmm. Let's read here from the uh, last two million years and we are reading from page 207. I just want you to read what's on the line and read that. We ain't going to wear you out with history. I know you don't want to hear it, but you're going to hear it today. <laughs> Because I'm going to identify who this people is, who this Israelite is here. So we're going to read some Bible and we're going to read some history. But we're going to understand who the Israelites are. You're going to understand that you indeed are an Israelite. You are not a Negro. You are not colored. You are not black. That's you right. are an Israelite. And That's we are right. going to show you that you are an Israelite. Amen. Now, it said that uh, Cush was the father of the Ethiopians. Mm -hmm. Show you what Ethiopia means. Go ahead and read. Ethiopia. Uh-huh. The name comes from the Greek Ethiops. Go ahead. Dark skin. Dark skin. That's what Ethiopia means. So now Cush, he was the father of the Ethiopians. So that mm -hmm. meant he was, he was dark skin, That's right? right? That's, That's right. what it said. That's what we read, didn't That's it? That's right. Let's go, uh, let's go now to, uh, let's go now to, uh, 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 uh. Let's go and, uh, to the uh, Funk and Wagner's encyclopedia now. And uh, 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 we're going to deal with another people here, the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. And we are reading from Funk and Wagner's encyclopedia. And we are reading volume 8. And we are going to pick it up at page 360. Everybody been, if, if you just pass by TV, you see Egypt on the news now, don't you? That's right. And you see all of these people, they look like Arabs, don't they? That's right. But yet they're calling themselves Egyptians, aren't they? Well, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. They are Arabs. That's right. And they are not 
the native Egyptians. We're going to show you something about the native Egyptians. And the reason I am doing this is because Israel and Egypt history is very closely connected. That's right. And we're going to even find out that the real Israelites, they look just like the Egyptians. Let's start reading here at, uh, I just want you to read uh, down to there and start right here. This, uh, this is the uh, Egyptians that we are reading about here. Go ahead and read. The people. Most Egyptians are descended from the successive Arab settlements after the Muslim invasion. Now he said most Egyptians. They descended from the who? Say that again. From the successive Arab settlements. Oh, they, oh so they, they, they seceded from the successive Arab settlements after the invasion. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Mixed with the indigenous pre-Islamic population. Oh, they said they mixed mm -hmm. with the indigenous pre-Islamic population. Mm -hmm. So in other words, when they got there, there was a people already there. That's right. The indigenous people. That means the native Egyptian was mm -hmm. already there. That's right. And when they got there, they mixed with them. I'm going to show you first when, when that was that they got there, then I'm going to show you how the indigenous people look. Let's read something here. I got some, I got some more. No, that's good. Okay. That's good for right now. We'll get okay. back to the rest of that later. Right. Now, this, uh, again, this came out of World Book Encyclopedia, Volume 6. And we are reading here about the uh, invasion, the Arab invasion. Mm -hmm. Show you when it took place. Go ahead, read. Egypt was a was a birthplace of civilization long before the start of its written history. Uh -huh. This history goes back more than 5,000 years to about 3100 B.C. Go ahead. For the story of Egypt until it fell to Arab invaders between A.D. 639 and 642. So you had the Arab invasion around 6-something uh, A.D. But before that, you already had a people there, didn't you? That's right. They were the indigenous natives mm -hmm. of the land. They was already there. Mm -hmm. it, uh, in, in around 642, when the Arabs invaded, mm -hmm. there was already a people there called the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read on. In A.D. 642, uh -huh. Muslim troops from Arabia captured Alexandria, the capital of Egypt. Uh-huh. At the time of the Arab conquest, Egypt was a province of the Byzantine or East Roman Empire. Uh -huh. For the next 200 years, Egypt was a province of the Arab Empire. Most Egyptians were converted from the Coptic Christian religion to Islam, the Muslim religion. They also began speaking Arabic and the language of the Arabs. So now, what did you have here? Before 642, you already had an indigenous people there in the land mm -hmm. that was called Egyptians. Right. Then when the Arabs invaded around six something, then they started to mix with the indigenous people that was there in the mm -hmm. land. I'm going to show you how the indigenous people looked. This is how they looked. These are the real Egyptians here. Mm -hmm. You understand? Don't look nothing like them people you see on TV, do they? That's running up and down the street calling themselves Egyptians. This is how they look. This is how the real Egyptians look. This is the indigenous Egyptians right here. A dark race of people. Mm -hmm. So now, when the, when, when the Arabs came in, they mixed with these people. Now we can go back and pick it back up again, Josh. Okay. Read, read it, read it uh, all. Start, start back okay. there again. Most Egyptians are, des are descended from the successive Arab settlements after the Muslim invasion, uh -huh. mixed with the indigenous pre-Islamic population. Now, who is the indigenous pre-Islamic uh, population? You looking at them. So now, when the Arabs came in, then they mixed with these people. Go ahead and read on. This mixture has given the inhabitants of the Nile Valley physical characteristics that set them apart from the other Mediterranean peoples of the region. Uh -huh. They are somewhat more stocky in build uh -huh. and have darker skin. And, they have, and why is it that they have darker skin? Because they came in and they mixed with this black mm -hmm. people, the real Egyptians here. That is why they have darker mm -hmm. skin. 
But now these are the real Egyptians. They are a dark race of people. Let's go and read something here from the Zondervan's Bible Dictionary. And read right down there about Ham. Okay. What does it say about Ham? Okay. Ham. Uh huh. The youngest son of Noah. Ham, the youngest son of Noah. Go ahead, read. Born probably about 96 years before the flood. Uh huh. And one of eight persons to live through the flood. Go ahead. He became the progenitor of the dog races. Well, he became the forefather of what? Of the dog races, it says. And let's see who the dog races are. Go ahead and read. Not the Negro. But not the Negro. You got a Negro here. That's a dog race. That's what they call you. Mm -hmm. Negro. You understand what I'm saying? But Negro just simply means black. That's what Negro means. Mm -hmm. Don't mean nothing else. Just black. But now it said Ham was the progenitor of the dog races, but not the Negro. Mm -hmm. Who then? Go ahead, read. But the Egyptians. But the Egyptians. They are dog race. Here we have them. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's out the Bible dictionary. We didn't put that in there. You know who put that in there? A Gentile put that in there. He told the truth. The dog races, the Egyptians. He is the forefather of the dog races, the Egyptians. Here you looking at them. The indigenous people of the land. The ones that was there before the Arabs got there in 642 A.D. Go ahead and read some more. The Ethiopians. Well, you know the Ethiopians is a dog race. They, you know that even now. Because the, the people that are sitting over there in Ethiopia now, they are the native Egypt, uh, Ethiopians rather. Mm. And what do the word Ethiopia mean? Dark skin. Mm -hmm. So yes, he was the forefather of the dark races, but not the Negroes. The Egyptians, the Ethiopians, and who else? Go ahead and read. Libyans and Canaanites. And Libyans and the Canaanites. So yes, he was the forefather of the dark races, and one of the dark races that he was the forefather of is the Egyptian. We're going to mm -hmm. find out a little bit later that the Israelites look just like these people. That's right. Now, let's go to, uh, let's go to, uh, 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 Exodus chapter 2. And we're going to pick it up at verse 11. Exodus chapter 2. And we began reading at verse 11. Now, we're about to read about an Israelite named Moses. He was raised by the Egyptians, but he was an Israelite mm -hmm. because the Pharaoh that was in power when Moses was born, he sent out the command to slay all of the Israelite boy babies and Moses was among them mm -hmm. so what Moses mother did was she hid him in a little basket and put him in the water and sent him down the river and Pharaoh's daughter had her maids to go and take Moses out of the water mm -hmm. and she raised Moses as her son but Moses was an Israelite. What she really did was she sent to get a maid to come and raise Moses. But you know who that maid turned out to be? Moses' real mother. So now, this is Moses after he had seen, because he knew he was an Israelite, after he had seen one of his brothers being whooped by an Egyptian. He rose up and he slew the Egyptian, and then Moses said, surely this thing is known. I got to get up out of here. So Moses fled out of there. Now, pick it up at verse uh, 11. Go ahead and read. And it came to pass in those days when Moses was grown uh -huh. that he went out unto his brethren and looked on their burdens, and he spied in Egypt. Who was his brethren? His brother was Israelite. Israel. He was out of the tribe of Levi. Mm -hmm. He was out of one of the tribes. The tribe he was out of was Levi. Mm -hmm. That was the priest tribe. Mm -hmm. So now he went out and he saw one of his brothers being mistreated. Mm -hmm. So Moses rose up and he slew the Egyptian. Go ahead, read. And he spied an Egyptian smiting in Hebrew, uh -huh. one of his brethren. Oh, he, so Moses was a Hebrew. That's right. 
So he smiled, the e Egyptians smite one of his brothers. Go ahead and read on. And he looked this way and that way, and when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and uh, hid him in the sand. Go ahead and read. And when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together. Some of his own brother. Mm. He right. not, they, they, Moses thought that nobody see him, but two of his own brothers saw him. That's right. Two, two Israelites, mm -hmm. Hebrew, saw him. They saw him. So now he said, Mo, Mo said uh, so now Moses feared that they was going to tell. Go ahead, read on. And he said to him that did the wrong, uh -huh. wherefore smitest thou thy fellow? Go ahead. And he said, who made thee a prince and a judge over us? Uh -huh. Intendest thou to kill me as thou killest the Egyptian? Uh -huh. And Moses feared and said, surely this thing is known. Go ahead. Now, when Pharaoh heard this thing, he sought to slay Moses. Now, now Pharaoh, uh, Pharaoh got worried about it now. Mm -hmm. So now he, 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 he threatened uh, to slay Moses. Mm -hmm. So Moses is going to have to flee up out of there. Go ahead and read. But Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. Go ahead and read. Now the priest of Midian had seven daughters, and they came and drew water and filled the troughs to, the, to water their father's flock. Now remember now, Moses is an Israelite. Mm -hmm. He's not an Egyptian. He is an Israelite. That's right. And remember, the Egyptians, they are a dark race of people. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, read. And the shepherds, 17. Uh -huh. And the shepherds came and drove them away. Uh -huh. But Moses stood Wait, up. So now, now these girls went out to, to uh, water their flock. Mm -hmm. Then the shepherds came and they drove the girls away. Go mm -hmm. ahead, read. But, but Moses stood up and helped them and watered their flock. Wait a minute. But Moses, the Israelite mm -hmm. now, stood up and helped them and water their flock. That's right. Go ahead and read on. And when they came to Ruel, their father, uh -huh. he said, how is it that you have come so soon today? Now the girls went back home and they got back uh, uh, sooner than they normally would get back. Mm -hmm. right. So now their father said, how is it that you came back so soon today? Go ahead and read on. And they said, an Egyptian delivered us out of the hand of the shepherds. No, it wasn't no Egyptian that delivered them out of the mm -hmm. hand of the shepherd. It was Moses. That's right. The Israelite mm -hmm. that delivered them out of the hand of the shepherd. But they thought that he was an Egyptian. So apparently, this Israelite looked like an Egyptian. Absolutely. You understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. That's right. So now, if the Egyptians are a dark race of people, and Moses was, the Israelite was mistaken for Egyptians, apparently he had to look like an Egyptian. That's right. That's right, bro. You can't mistake me for an Irishman. Mm -mm. <laughs> That's right. You understand what, you look at, he said, well, no, he ain't no Irishman, I know that much. I don't know what he is, but I know he ain't no Irishman. That's right. Because he don't look nothing like Isaac. You understand what I'm saying? But now you have Moses, the Israelite, that looked like the Egyptian. Mm -hmm. So that would say to me that they all must have been at least the same color anyway. That's right. We ain't through. We ain't, we ain't even started to make our case yet. Let's go now to, uh, let's go now to uh, 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 read a newspaper article. And this newspaper article, it was from May 10th, 1999. Because Moses had a brother, and his name was Aaron. Mm -hmm. And Aaron was the high priest. Read the title of that article. Okay. And then... Read what's on the line and read there. DNA ties African group to Jews. Now he said, D now we deal with DNA. And, and, and you know how accurate DNA is supposed to be. You know, you see it all the time on mm -hmm. TV. Some guy been in jail 30 years. All of a sudden they ran some DNA tests and found out that he's innocent. Mm -hmm. So DNA is supposed to be something like 99 point something percent accurate. So now, DNA ties African group to Jews. Go ahead and read. Tests support long-time limber claims. Now, these limber people, they are a black people. So now, and these people have been making claims mm -hmm. for years that they are Israelites. 
Ain't nobody pay them no attention. Just like when you tell somebody you're Israelite, they think you nuts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so now, what they said is what we're going to do here is we're going we gonna to run some DNA tests on these people and prove once and for all that they are not Israelites. Let's run these tests on them and see what comes up. Go ahead, Reed. Genetic tests on the Limba people of southern Africa show strong evidence that the Bantu-speaking tribe may be of Jewish ancestry. Wait, wait a minute. Genetic tests show that they may be of what? Of Jewish ancestry. You understand what I'm saying? DNA test says that. You know, it's one thing to read something in a book. It's another thing to have somebody to tell you mm -hmm. something. But now they done ran the DNA test on these people, and the DNA test says that, that they are of Jewish ancestry. Go ahead and read on. A team of geneticists have discovered that Limba men carry a DNA sequence uh -huh. that is distinctive to the Cohaban a, a hereditary set of Jewish priests. Uh -huh. The New York Times said Sunday, the priests who are different from rabbis perform certain ritual roles. Uh -huh. The limbers who practice circumcision. Wait a minute, he said the limbers, they where, where did they get circumcision from? Same place we got it from, mm -hmm. out of the Bible. You didn't know nothing about no circumcision until one day somebody showed you that you was an Israelite. And they right. showed you that Israel, all the males, is supposed to be circumcised on the eighth day. Mm -hmm. Then right. you decided, even though you were 60, that you was going to go and get circumcised. Right. Why? Because you read in the Bible that mm -hmm. you were Israel, and God had a law for Israel that all of the males needed to be circumcised. Mm -hmm. You know, these people got their information from the same place we got ours from, right. and that is out of the Bible. Go ahead and read on. They keep one day a week holy and avoid eating pork. Well, and, and they keep one day a week holy, and what day is that they keep holy? The seventh day, the same day that you keep. And you avoid eating pork too, don't you? Why do you avoid eating pork? Because you read about the dietary law in the 11th chapter of Leviticus. Mm -hmm. And these people, they discovered the same thing. They went in the Bible. They found out that they were Israel. They had been saying that. Wasn't nobody paying no attention, though. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, don't pay them. They, they in a cult. Don't pay them no attention. Right. <laughs> we'll run these DNA tests on them, and that'll prove that they ain't no Israelite. Then when they ran the DNA test on it, it said, yes, they are Israelites. That's right. I've been telling you that. Why do you think I start getting circumcised? Mm -hmm. Why do you think I stop eating pork? Why do you think I start keeping the Sabbath day? These people, they did the same thing. They stopped, you know, they, they, they started getting circumcised. Mm -hmm. They stopped eating pork. They started keeping the Sabbath day. Go ahead and read on. Or pig-like animals. Uh-huh. Long have asserted they are of Jewish heritage. See what I'm saying? They long been saying that they are of Jewish heritage. I've been saying for almost 40 years, and everybody think I'm stupid except y'all. And that's what they, they have been saying it for years and years and years and years. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody listening to them, though, until they ran the DNA test. The DNA test said, yeah, they Jews. Go ahead, read. The discovery of the common DNA sequence stemmed from research into uh -huh. the Jewish tradition. Go ahead. That priests are the descendants of Aaron, the that elder brother of Moses. The priests are the descendants of who? Aaron, uh the brother of Moses. Mm -hmm. So now, you got Moses that look like an Egyptian, and they were a dark race of people. Then you got the DNA test that said Moses' brother Aaron, mm -hmm. he was a dark race of people mm -hmm. as well. That's what these lemma people have been That's saying. Right. That's right. Then they ran the DNA test, I'm sure to prove them all wrong, but, but it backfired on them. <laughs> so now, you got the description Bible give for Israel, dog race of people. You got the DNA, dog race of people. We ain't through. We got a lot more proof here that we gonna deal with. Now let's go to uh, let's go to uh, 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 Acts chapter twenty one, and we gonna pick it up at verse twenty seven. Now we gonna deal with Paul the Israelite. Mm -hmm. Everybody love him. And he said, he said that he was an Israelite of the 
seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Israel. He said, he said that, That's didn't right. he? That's right. Acts chapter 21, and we're going to pick it up at verse 27. Acts 21, and we'll pick it up at verse 27. Okay, go ahead and read. And when the seven days were almost ended, uh -huh. the Jews which were of Asia, when they saw him in the temple, stirred up all the people and laid hands on him. Now, this is Paul. You know, the Jew, because, you know, they followed Paul around because, you know, this was after he had been converted mm -hmm. and, 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 and became a Christian. So, you know, the, 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 the other Jews, they were opposed to Christianity because, remember, Jesus is a Jew now. Mm -hmm. I, I, know, I know I'm not supposed to say that today. But, 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 but Jesus was a Jew. When he That's walked right. around in the flesh, he was a Jew. Looked like all the rest of the Jews. Don't nobody say that no more. You know, he's everybody's personal savior now. He's not a Jew. He's just everybody's personal savior. He's not a Jew. He is not the king of Israel anymore. He's just your personal savior now. But Jesus was an Israelite. You That's understand right. what I'm saying? And he looked like all of the other Israelites. And the reason I know that is, is when Judas betrayed him, he told them, go down there. And the one I kissed, that is him, hold him, hold him fast. Because they didn't know the difference. Mm -hmm. He didn't look no different from no other Jew or no other Israelite. That's right. That's why Judas had to betray him with a kiss. Mm -hmm. You know, if he looked in a, in a different, he said a guy that looked like a Caucasian, that's him, get him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's right. Or the guy that's walking around with the halo over his head, grab him. Mm -hmm. That's the one. Right. That's right. But no, Judas said, the one that I betrayed with a kiss, that's mm -hmm. him, hold him fast. He looked just like every. Other, that, every other Israelite. Don't nobody say that nowadays. Don't dare say Jesus is an Israelite. But that's what he was. So now, you know, so Paul, after he had been converted, then he had started to be a follower of Jesus. Then the other Jews that was Pharisees and all of that, they were opposed to him, and they were, uh, and so now they, they grabbed him. Go ahead and read on. What verse are we? 28. Go ahead and read. Crying out. Men of Israel, help. Uh -huh. This is the man that teacheth all men everywhere against the people uh -huh. and the law. Go ahead. And, and this place, and further brought Greeks also in the temple and have polluted this holy place. Now, you know, for Israel, because Israel had this little thing, you know, uh, uh, but, uh, but the word of God was just for them. Because mm -hmm. the Lord had initially chose them, and, and it was their responsibility to go and teach everybody else. But Israel had this little thing that this word was just for them, and they were opposed to teaching anybody else. So now, they thought Paul had brought this Gentile in the temple. So they said, now hold him fast. Go ahead and read on. For they had seen before with him in the city Trophimus, an Ephesian whom they supposed that Paul had brought into the temple. Uh -huh. And all the city was moved, and the people ran together, and they took Paul Go ahead. and drew him out of the temple, and forthwith the doors were shut. Uh -huh. And as they went about to kill him, tidings came unto the chief captain of the band that all Jerusalem was in an uproar. Now, when they was, about, they was about to kill him, you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Then tidings came that all Jerusalem was in an uproar. Skip down to uh, verse uh, uh, 36. Go ahead and read. For the mult multitude of the people followed after crying, uh -huh. away with him. Away with him. This is what they were saying about Paul. Go ahead and read on. And as Paul was to be led into the castle, uh -huh. he said unto the chief captain, Go ahead. May I speak unto thee, uh -huh. who said... Canst thou speak Greek? Now, as Paul was being led away, he asked the chief captain, May I speak unto thee? And the captain said, Can if you speak Greek? Look what else the captain said. Go ahead and read. Art not thou that Egyptian? Wait a minute. He said, Art not you that Egyptian? Wait a minute. Why did he mistake Paul for an Egyptian? Paul is an Israelite. he looked like one. He had to look like one, That's didn't right. he? In order for it to be mistaken for an Egyptian, he had to look like one. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read on. Which before these days made an uproar uh -huh. and led us out into the wilderness 4,000 men that were murderers. Uh -huh. But Paul said, 
I am a man which am a Jew of Tarsus. He said, no, I am a man that is a Jew of Tarsus. No, I'm not an Egyptian. I am not an Egyptian. I look like one, but I'm not one. That's right. I look like him, but I'm not one. Mm -hmm. I am a man that is a Jew. Go ahead and read on. A Jew of Tarsus, uh -huh. a city in Cilicia, Go ahead. a citizen of no mean city, and I beseech thee, suffer me to speak unto the people. So now we have Moses, the Israelite. Mm -hmm. He has been mistaken for an Egyptian. Mm -hmm. And we have Paul, the Israelite. He too has been mistaken for an Egyptian. Mm -hmm. Then we have Moses' brother Aaron mm -hmm. that the DNA said that they were a dark race of people. Mm -hmm. We ain't through. We got a lot more stuff here. I ain't going to give it all to you today. That's why we're going to do this in a three-part series. Let's go to... Uh, 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 Let's go to the uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 11, and we're going to pick it up at verse 10. Isaiah chapter 11, and we're going to pick it up at verse 10. Isaiah 11 and 10. Isaiah 11 and 10. Lord said that this Israelite was going to be scattered throughout the world in bondage. We're going to get to that in another edition of this black history. But I do want to read this. Isaiah 11, pick it up at verse 10. 11 and 10. Go ahead and read. And in that day mm -hmm. there shall be a root of Jesse. Go ahead. Which shall stand for an ensign of the people. Uh -huh. To which shall the Gentiles seek and his rest shall be glory. Now this is talking about Jesus here and it is dealing with him at his second coming. Mm -hmm. But now Israel, they got scattered throughout all of the world. Jesus said that they would be scattered. Go ahead and read on. And it shall come to pass in that day uh -huh. that the Lord shall set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. Wait a minute. He said now it will come to pass. He's talking about when Jesus makes his second coming. Mm -hmm. That he's going to set his hand again the second time to recover the remnant of his people. When was the first time when he brought them out of Egypt? Mm -hmm. When is the second time when he gathered them out of all nations wherein they have been scattered? Go ahead and read on. Which shall be left from Assyria. Which shall be left from Assyria. Go ahead and read on. And from Egypt. From Egypt. In other words, they, they've been scattered down in Egypt as mm -hmm. well. Go ahead and read on. And from Pathros. And from Pathros. Go ahead and read. And from Cush. And from Cush. Where is Cush? That is Ethiopia, right. isn't it? Yeah. So now if Israel going to be gathered out of Ethiopia, mm -hmm. that must mean that they have been scattered down in Ethiopia, That's right. right? That's right. Okay. Just want to make sure you understand me. Let's go to... Uh, that is good for right now. Mm -hmm. Let's go to uh, 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 the uh, uh, Grolia Encyclopedia here. And we are going to read. I, I just made a copy out of it. We're going to read from uh, volume 7, page 200. I want you to read what's on the line in red there. Volume 7, page 200. Show me that picture of the Philosophian. Yeah, the Philosophian. There we go. That's what I want right there. Go ahead and read. Philosophians. Philosophians. The Philosophians are a group of Ethiopians who claim Jewish origin as descendants of Menelik. Now, he said, now they are, it said they are a group of Ethiopians. And they claim Jewish origin. And that claim is right. You want to know how the Philosophians look? That's, that's a picture of one right there. That's how they look. And they look like an Ethiopian, don't they? But these people say, no, we're we, we not e Ethiopian. We are Jews. We have Jewish heritage. Go ahead and read on. The alleged son of King Solomon, the queen of Sheba. Uh-huh. The Philosophers observed the traditions of Judaism. Well, he said that they observed the traditions of what's called Judaism. Go ahead and read on. They practice monogamy. In other words, one wife. Go ahead and read on. Ob obey the biblical laws of purity and circumcision. Oh, you mean they, they believe in the Bible. Right. And they obey the biblical laws of circumcision, just like the Lumber people mm -hmm. did. 
You understand what I'm saying? Then they, they did, you know, they did the circumcision and don't eat pork and keep the Sabbath day and all of that. These are dark people that we are looking at. Go ahead and read on. Observe the Sabbath and biblical holidays. And he said they observe the Sabbath and biblical holidays like we do. Why do we observe the Sabbath and biblical holiday? Because we look in the Bible and we discovered that we was Israel and we decided we're going to obey the laws that God gave to Israel. Go ahead and read on. Recite traditional prayers uh -huh. and follow biblical dietary customs. Go ahead. Keep reading what's on the line in red there. The name for Lasha and Am Amaric for stranger. Oh, so now the, the name for Lasha... That's what it means. It means stranger. Go ahead and read. Was given to them by other Ethiopians that called themselves Wait Native a minute. Israel. He said that name, Palacians, mm -hmm. was given to them by the Ethiopians. That's who gave them the name Palacians. Just like we were given the name Negro. But now it said these people, they was given the name Palacians. By the Ethiopian, but what do they call themselves? Go ahead and read. In 1984. No, 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 no. Back up. Philosophers. Uh-huh. The name Philosia, Aramic for stranger. Go ahead. Was given to them by other Ethiopians. So now the Ethiopians gave them the name Philosophers. That means stranger. But what do they call themselves? Go they ahead. They call read. themselves Beta Israel. But house they of call Israel. themselves the House of Israel. <laughs> Just like we were given the name Negro, but we said, no, we ain't no Negro. We are the children of Israel. That's right. That's right. How did we come up with that information? We got it out of the Bible. Right. How did they come up with that information? They got it out of the Bible. Mm -hmm. So the Limber people, a dark uh, people, mm -hmm. they looked into the Bible and they discovered that they were of the seed of the Israelites. Mm -hmm. Then the Philosophers, they did the same thing. Then you have us, the so-called Negroes, we did the same identical thing. Did you finish all of that? I got a small piece right here. Go ahead and read it. In 1984 and 85, thousands of them were airlifted to Israel in a rescue operation sponsored by the Israeli government. So now it said in 1985. That's what this, that's what this is about. Mm -hmm. We're not going to read. We're going to read some excerpts from it next uh, uh in the next lesson but that's what this is about it's because they, they they got an article in here that talks about how the uh edomites airlifted these people out of ethiopia and brought them back to the land of israel and acknowledge that they are the israelites that's right that's what the edomites did and it's all in here and we're going to read some of it next week. Praise the Lord. If you're old enough to remember 1985 and 86 back then, you will remember that airlift. It was in the paper. This came out of the uh, Chicago Sun-Times, mm -hmm. April 28th, 1985. Mm -hmm. And it talks about how the Ethiopians went down there, how, how the uh, uh, Edomites went down there, and brought some of these people out of Ethiopia. It said brought out about 7,000, and it said it was something like still another 7,000 still down there. But then the Lord talks about here in Isaiah chapter 11 that he's going to gather Israel out of all of these places, and one of the places that he named was Cush, right? right. So if he's going to gather them out of Cush, that means they ain't going to have to be there, don't they? Yes, they are. They know that they are Israelites. But the people said that they are Philosians, which means stranger. But they said, no, we the house of Israel. Mm -hmm. They tell me that I'm a Negro. I said, no, I'm not. I'm an Israelite. That's who I am. Because right. I did my homework, and I found out who I was. That's right. Now, let's go to, uh, let's go to, uh, 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 we're going to read a definition here from the Random House Dictionary. And the definition we're going to read here is Negro. Read uh, what's on the line in red there. Go ahead and read. Negro. Uh-huh. One having dark skin pigmentation. Uh-huh. 
pertaining to or character. A Negro is one that have dark skin or pigmentation. Go ahead and read. Pertaining to or characteristics of black race of mankind. Uh huh. The indigenous people of Africa. Go ahead. Generally characterized by brown to black pigmentation. Generally characterized by brown to black pigmentation. In other words, looking like me. Go ahead and read them. Broad, flat nose. Uh huh. You know, broad, flat nose. You know. Go ahead and read. Prognathicism, mm -hmm. inverted lips. Uh huh. You know, like mine. You know. <laughs> Go ahead and read. And woolly or crisp hair. Well, I ain't got much left, but the little bit I got left, <laughs> you know, it's, 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 it's woolly hair. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> I've got to read this again. Since we read it earlier, we're going to read it one more time. Okay. Read again from the uh, 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 Compact Bible Dictionary. Zonda Vans Compact Bible Dictionary about Ham again. Go ahead and read. Ham. Uh-huh. The youngest son of Noah. Go ahead. Born probably about 96 years before the flood. Uh-huh. And one of eight persons to live through the flood. Go ahead. He became the progenitor of the dark races, not the Negro. Okay, so now, he became the forefather of the dark races, but not the Negro. And we read you what a Negro is. It's a black person, you know, with the big lips and the, and the woolly hair and all of that. That's what a Negro is. So now Ham was the forefather of the dark races, but not the Negroes. You, you, you something else you didn't read there. Two other, a little, little bit on the okay. line right there, Negro okay. and, and Niger. Go ahead and read. Negro. Negro. Black. Black. Go ahead and read. Niger. Niger. Black. Black. Okay, I want you to read that. Now, let's go to uh, Acts chapter 13, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. You know what a Negro is. You know they got the woolly hair and the thick lips and all of that. And the word Negro means black. And the word Niger means black. That's right. That came out of Random House Dictionary. We didn't put that in there. Acts chapter 13, verse 1. These were Israelites that we are reading about here. But I'm going to show you what they call these people. Go mm -hmm. ahead and read. 13 now, and 1. Go ahead. Now, there were in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers, uh -huh. as Barnabas and Simeon that was called Niger. Wait a minute. As Bar these are Israelites that we are reading about mm -hmm. here. And what were they called? They were called Niger. Mm -hmm. Why were they called Niger? Why were they called black? Because that's what color they were. That's right. That's why they call the, uh, 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 the, 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 the children of Cush, mm -hmm. Ethiopians. Mm -hmm. Ethiopian mean dark skin That's or right. burnt skin. That's right. So they look at these people and call them Ethiopia, dark skin or burnt skin. Mm -hmm. They looked at you, Negro mean black. They called you Negro, which mm -hmm. means black. Mm -hmm. Then they looked at these Israelites and they called them Niger, which means black. These were Israelites, though, that we're looking at, that we're reading about here. Let's go further. Let's go now to uh, let's go now to uh, 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 Exodus chapter one, and we'll pick it up at uh, verse eight. Israelites, they were in bondage to a dark race of people, the Egyptians. That's what they were in bondage to, a dark race of people, the Egyptians. Start reading at Exodus chapter 1 and began reading at verse 8. Exodus 1 and eight. Go ahead and read, brother. Now there arose up a new king over Egypt, uh -huh. which knew not Joseph. Go ahead and read. And he said unto his people, uh -huh. Behold, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. Go ahead and read. Come on, let us deal wisely with them, lest they multiply and come to pass that when they're fallen out any war, uh -huh. they join also unto our enemies and fight against us, and so get them up out of the land. Go ahead and read. Therefore they did set 
over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasured cities, Python and Ramesses. Now, you know, this is what the Egyptians, a dark race of people, mm -hmm. was doing to the Israelites. Go ahead and read on. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew. Go ahead. And they were grieved because of the children of Israel. And the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. Uh huh. And they, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage. See what it said? They made them to serve with rigor, and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage. Go ahead and read on. In mortar uh, and in brick. In mortar and in, in other words, they had them building stuff. Mm -hmm. And you know, in mortar and in brick, it said. Go ahead and read on. And in all manner of service in the field. Uh huh. And all their service, wherein they made them serve, was with rigor. So you know, they had them working in the field. And they had them making brick, building stuff, all of that. This is what the Egyptians, a dark race of people, did to the Israelites mm -hmm. here. Now, let's go to uh, let's go to Acts chapter. I don't mean Acts, but uh, Exodus chapter five, and pick it up at verse one. Exodus chapter five, and pick it up at verse one. Five and one. Five and one. Okay, go ahead, me. And afterward, Moses and Aaron went in uh -huh. and told Pharaoh. Thus said the Lord God of Israel, uh -huh. let my people go that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. Go ahead, me. And Pharaoh said, who is the Lord that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? Uh -huh. I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. Go ahead, me. And they said, the God of the Hebrews have met with us. Let us go. We pray thee three days journey into the desert and sacrifice unto the Lord our God, lest he fall upon us with pestilence or with the soul. Go ahead, me. And the king of Egypt said unto them, Wherefore do ye, Moses and Aaron, let the people, let the people from their works get you unto your burdens? Go ahead, me. And Pharaoh said, Behold, the people of the land now are many, and you make them rest from their burdens. Uh, so he said, Pharaoh said, Moses, what are you talking about, man? You say you 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 making I I got had them out there in the fields mm -hmm. and making brick and all of that stuff, and you go. Let them rest from their birds. Get you out of here. Make them people work. Go ahead and read on. And Pharaoh commanded the same day the taskmasters of the people and their officers, saying, uh -huh. Ye shall no more give the people straw to make brick as their, or as heretofore. Now he said, You shall no more give them straw to make brick as you did before. Mm -hmm. Now they're going to have to get their own straw. You know, I was supplying them with straw to make brick, but no, since you're going to try to lighten their burden, I ain't going to give them no straw no more. They're going to have to get their own straw. Go ahead and read on. Let them go and gather straw for themselves. Uh-huh. And the tail of the bricks which they, which they which did make hereto, you shall lay upon them. Go ahead. You shall not diminish aught thereof, uh -huh. for they be idle. Therefore they cry, saying, Let us go and sacrifice to our God. Go ahead and read. Let their more work be laid upon the men, uh -huh. that they may labor therein, and let them not regard vain words. Go ahead, read. And the taskmasters of the people went out, and their officers, and they spake to the people, saying, Thus said Pharaoh, I will not give you straw. Uh -huh. Go ye, get you straw where you can find it, yet not all of your work shall be diminished. So now you go get your own straw, but you still better make the same amount of bricks you've been making. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, so what did we have? We had the Egyptians, a dark race of people. Mm -hmm. They had the Israelites down there in Egypt making brick. Let's show some pictures here, and we're going to read some uh, excerpts. Now, these uh, was taken from uh, uh, Egyptian archives. That's where these pictures was taken from. Let's, uh, we want to show the first one here. There we go right up there on the screen now. So now, I want him to read because under each picture is an excerpt. Mm -hmm. They discovered these in Egyptian tombs. That's where these came from. Some artists didn't just sit down and draw these one day. They discovered this stuff in Egyptian tombs. Okay, go ahead and read what that one says. An Egyptian slave endures a flogging in this fresco from now, now, this is the one that's getting the flog in here. No, no, it's good. This is the one that's getting the flog in here. He is the slave. This is the Israelite here. Go ahead and read. From a, from, in this fresco from a tomb of the New Kingdom, uh -huh. the number of slaves in Egypt increased dramatically during the New Kingdom, uh -huh. 1570 to 1085 B.C. 
Now, this is during the time when Israel was in bondage under the Egyptians. Go ahead and read. As a result of foreign conquests, uh -huh. the Israelites were enslaved during this period. Now, he said the Israelites was enslaved during this period. Now, this is the Israelite here that's being flogged. And who is it that's doing the flogging? It's the Egyptian. I don't see no difference in them. Do you? That's right. The Israelite looks just like the Egyptian. Mm -hmm. In other words, it is a dark man being flogged by a dark man. But one is an Egyptian and the other is an Israelite. Mm -hmm. We got another picture. Bring it up. Bring up picture number two. That's how it looks. It has a caption on it, and we're going to read that as well. Okay, go ahead and read. Okay. Brick-making captives. Brick, wait a minute. Wasn't Israel down in Egypt making brick? Mm -hmm. It said brick-making captives. Go ahead and read. Depicted on a wall painting from the tomb of Rechmira. Well, oh, they found this in a tomb. They mm -hmm. found all this stuff in a tomb. They found this in a tomb. Mm -hmm. You know, the Egyptians, they had a way of preserving stuff. You know, and they buried all this stuff in tombs. Then you had archaeologists. They came along and they dug all of this stuff up. So now, they discovered this in a tomb as well. Go ahead and read. At Thebes in 1533 and 1450 B.C., uh -huh. bearded foreigners under the supervision of... Well, it said bearded foreigners. Mm -hmm. Who are the bearded foreigners? Israel. That's the Israelite. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the Lord had said that Israel was not to shave. So Israel wore beards. You understand what I'm saying? So now it said even Jesus wore a beard. Mm -hmm. It said bearded foreigners. Go ahead and read on. Under the supervision of Egyptian with stick far right. Wait, under the supervision of an Egyptian with a stick in his hand. That's on the far right. It ain't showing up too clearly there. But go ahead and read on. Uh, gather water and work mud and straw together in, into molds. Uh-huh. At the top That's left. That's why they needed straw. You know, to make the, the mold to make the brick with. Mm -hmm. They gather mud and straw in order to make the brick. But what did Pharaoh say? I ain't giving you no more straw. Go get your own straw. And you better still make the same amount of bricks you've been making. Go ahead and read on. At the top left, a worker lifts a mold from a sun-dried brick. Uh -huh. At the far right, a worker carries cured brick to build to the building site. Uh -huh. Israelite workers were making... What kind of workers? Israelite workers. Israelite workers here. So now, who, who, who are the work, the one doing the work? They are Israelite. Mm -hmm. They are dark people. You understand what I'm saying? Now, you, you, you know, all the evidence says that mm -hmm. they are dark people. Go ahead and read a little bit more. Israelite workers were making bricks in Egypt at the time this was painted. At the time this was painted, Israelite workers, it said, was making brick down mm -hmm. in Egypt. Israelites. But all I see on this picture is a, a dog people here. So what does that tell you? That tell you that the Israelite had to be a dog people. That's right. We ain't through. Bring up picture number three. Okay. Read the caption uh, about that. Mm -hmm. what, does, what, does, what does this person here look like to you? Look like a dog man to me. And look like he's doing labor here, doesn't it? And he even bearded as well, isn't he? Go ahead, read. An Egyptian fresco showing a carpenter at work. Uh-huh. Below, a wooden model of Egyptian brickmakers. The Israelites were doubtless engaged in such activities when building treasure cities for Pharaoh in Egypt. Well, we read about them building the treasure city, didn't we? You know, we read that in Exodus, didn't we? Well, how did the people look that was doing the building? This is how they look. Mm -hmm. That's how they look, just like that. But this is saying that these were Israelites that was doing that. A dark race of people. The real Israelites are a dark race of people. That's people right. make no mistake about that. The DNA said it. Mm -hmm. The evidence said it when they mistaken Moses, the Israelite, for an Egyptian. Mm -hmm. The evidence said it when they mistaken Paul, the Israelite, for an Egyptian. Mm -hmm. The DNA said that Moses' brother was a dark person. Mm -hmm. All of the evidence said that the Israelites are a dark race of people. Bring up the other picture. We got another one here. And we're going to read the caption up under that. That's clearly two dark people there. 
One's a king and the other one is a queen. Go ahead and read. When the tomb of Egypt, Egyptian king Tutankhamun mm -hmm. was discovered virtually intact in the 1920s. In other words, some biblical archaeologists, they discovered this tomb of Tutankhamun around the 1920s. That's when they discovered it. Because, you know, they have archaeologists that go all through what we call Bible lands and they dig up stuff trying to find evidence of what was way back then. And they discovered this tomb in the 1920s. Go ahead and read. It yielded a breathtaking collection of art objects from the 14th century B.C. Well, that was around the time when Israel was in bondage to the Egyptians. Go ahead and read on. Just a few years before the Exodus. What Exodus? The Exodus that you reading mm -hmm. about here in your Bible. Why do you think the word Exodus, why do you think they call this book Exodus? Mm -hmm. You know why they call it Exodus? Is because it had to do when Israel leaving out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. That's what Exodus means, to leave out. And this book deals with when Israel was led out of Egypt. So now, this, this picture they discovered, it happened around the time of the Exodus. Go ahead and read a little bit what's, what's left there. Above is a panel from Tutankhamun's throne showing the youthful king speaking to his adoring queen. Now this is how the uh, the king looked, mm -hmm. and the queen of Egypt looked when Israel was in bondage down in it. These are clearly black people, huh? ain't them black people? So now, the, the, the Egyptians, they are a dark race of people, but we see that the Israelites look just like them, don't they? Mm -hmm. Let's go to, uh, let's go to uh, uh, Romans chapter 9. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Romans 9, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. 9 and 1. 9 and 1. This is what Paul the Israelite said about Israel. Start reading at 9 and 1. Go ahead and read. I say the truth in Christ. Mm -hmm. I lie not. Go ahead. My conscience also bearing me witness in the Holy Ghost uh -huh. that I have a great heaviness and continual sorrow in my heart. For I could wish that myself were cursed from Christ for my brethren, my kinsmen according to the flesh. So now he's dealing with natural born Israelites here, isn't he? He said, my kinsmen according to the flesh. Go ahead and read on. Who are Israelites. Now he said they are Israelites. Go ahead and read. To whom pertaineth the adoption. Now he said unto them was given the adoption. Go ahead and read. And the glory. And the glory. And the covenant. And the covenants. Go ahead. And the giving of the law. And the giving of the law. Go and, ahead and read. And the service of God and the promises. And the giving of the law and the service of God and the promises. Go ahead and read on. Whose are the fathers. Uh-huh. And of whom as concerning the flesh Christ came. Now he's letting you know that Jesus was an Israelite. Mm-hmm. When he walked around in the flesh, he was an Israelite, and he looked just like all of the other Israelites. Let's go now to uh, Isaiah chapter 5, and we'll pick it up at verse 1. Isaiah 5, and we'll pick it up at verse 1. 5 and 1. You know, the Bible gives a little description of Jesus, and we're going to read it in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Isaiah chapter 5, and we'll begin reading at verse 1. 5 and 1. Five and one. Okay, go ahead and read. Now will I sing to my beloved a song of my beloved uh -huh. touching his vineyard. Wait, who, who is the beloved? That is Jesus. And it said touching his vineyard, and we're going to find out that Israel is the vineyard. Go ahead and read on. My well-beloved have a vineyard in a very fruitful heat. Uh -huh. And he fenced it and gathered out the stones thereof and planted it with the choicest vine. Uh -huh. And built a tower in the midst of it. And also made a wine press therein. Go ahead. And he looked that it should bring forth grapes, and it brought forth wild grapes. Now, this happened to do with when the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And you know, he set them up there, and he did everything for Israel to make certain that they were a prosperous nation. But then, when he looked that it should bring forth grapes, what did it bring forth? Wild grapes. You know, you prune something. You make, you do everything, you fertilize it. You do everything to make it produce good fruit. Mm. And that is what God did for Israel. But instead, what did Israel bring forth? Wild grapes. Go ahead and read on. And now, O inhabitants of Jerusalem uh -huh. and men of Judah, Go ahead. judge, I pray you, betwixt me and my vineyard. Uh -huh. What could have been done more to my vineyard that I have not done in it? Go ahead. Wherefore, when I look, 
that it should bring forth grapes, brought it forth wild grapes. Uh-huh. And now go to. I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. Now, now this is what the Lord said. Since it didn't, didn't produce the kind of food it was supposed to produce, mm. therefore, this is what I'm going to do with my vineyard. Go ahead and read on. I will take away the heads thereof, and it shall be eaten up. Go ahead. And break down the wall thereof, and it shall be trodden down. Uh -huh. And I will lay it waste. Go ahead. It shall not be pruned nor dig, but there shall come up briars and thorns. Uh -huh. And I will also command the clouds that they rain no rain upon it. Now, he said, in other words, I'm not going to take care of this vineyard anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm going to just leave this vineyard to itself. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to take care of it anymore. You know, I was the keeper of the vineyard, but since it brought forth wild grapes, I'm not going to keep it anymore. Go ahead and read on. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel. Now, he said, the vineyard of the Lord of hosts, it is the house of Israel. Go ahead and read. And the men of Judah, his pleasant plant. Uh-huh. And he looked for judgment, but behold, oppression. Go ahead. For righteousness, but behold, a cry. Because that's when the Lord, you know, when he planted it, he gave it everything that it should have, that it would produce good grapes. But Israel did not do what they were supposed to do. So the Lord said, I'm not going to take care of this vineyard anymore. Let's go to Song of Solomon chapter 1. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Song of Solomon, that's right before Isaiah. Just back up. Song of Solomon chapter 1, and we'll begin reading at verse 1. The keeper of the vineyard, that is Jesus. And I'm going to show you the color of the keeper of the vineyard. Okay, start reading at Song of Solomon 1 and pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead and read. The Song of Songs, which is Solomon's. Uh -huh. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, for thy love is better than wine. Go ahead. Because of the Savior of thy good ointments, thy name is as ointment poured, poured forth. Uh -huh. Therefore do the virgins love thee. Now, you know, this is not really dealing with Solomon. This is Jesus here. That's right. And the church, that's who this is really dealing with. Mm -hmm. He said, he, see what it say here? Uh, you know, that, that name, it said, is as an ointment poured forth, therefore the virgins do love thee. Go ahead and read on. Draw me, we will run after thee. Now he said, draw me and we will run after thee. Go ahead and read on. The king have brought me into his chamber. Uh -huh. We will be glad and rejoice in thee. Go ahead. We will remember thy love more than wine. Uh -huh. The upright love thee. Now you know this ain't dealing with Solomon here because it said the upright love That's thee. Right. And it was not the upright that loved Solomon. That's right. You know all them strange women that he built all them pagan shrines to. Mm -hmm. That's who loved Solomon. That's right. But who is the upright? Those are the people that walk in righteousness. And who do they love? They love Jesus. Because That's Jesus right. said, if you love me, then you'll keep my commandments. That's right. This is the upright. And this is who we are dealing with mm -hmm. here. Go ahead and read on. I am black, but comely, O ye daughters of Wait Jerusalem. Wait a minute. He said, I am black, mm -hmm. but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem here. This is the keeper of the vineyard that we are reading about. Who is the keeper of the vineyard? It is Jesus. He said that thy name is as an ointment poured for. Mm -hmm. Solomon's name is not like an ointment, but Jesus' name is like an ointment. That's you know right. what an ointment does? It heals. It heals. You understand right. what I'm saying? Anytime you have a spiritual ailment, what name do you call Jesus. on? Jesus, don't you? That's right. And when you have a physical ailment and you have somebody come and pray over you, and what name do they do it in? The in the name of Jesus. That's right. You got a demon on you mm -hmm. and you need to have it cast out. Mm -hmm. What name do you do it in? Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That's right. Thy name is as an ointment. Mm -hmm. Not Solomon's name, but Jesus' name. But now he said, I am black, mm -hmm. but comely, O ye daughters of Jerusalem. This is the keeper of the vineyard here. Mm -hmm. This is Jesus that we are reading about. And Israelite. That's right. He just told you in Romans chapter 9 that even Jesus was of the Israelites. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read on. As the tents of Kedar, as the curtains of Solomon. Go ahead. Look not upon me because I am black. Uh -huh. Because the sun have looked upon me. Look here, the sun not going to make you black. Mm -mm. You understand what I'm saying? If you ain't a dark-skinned person already, the sun ain't going to make you black. Go ahead and read. My mother's children were angry with me. He said, my mother's children, they were angry with me. Go ahead and read on. They made me the keeper of the vineyard. They made me the keeper of the vineyard. Who was the keeper of the vineyard? Jesus. 
But the keeper of the vineyard say, I am black, but comely, O oh, ye daughters of Jerusalem. Go ahead and read on. But my own vineyard have I not kept. Well, he told you he wasn't going to keep it no more, That's didn't right. he? He said, I'm going to tear down the heads thereof mm -hmm. that it might be broken down. That's right. And I'm not going to rain on it anymore. So he's not the keeper of the vineyard. That's right. He allowed, he said, they made me the keeper of the vineyard, but my own vineyard I did not keep. Who is his own vineyard? Israel. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. What verse out? Verse 7. Go ahead and read. Tell me, O thou whom my soul loveth, uh -huh. where thou feedest, where thou makest thy flock to rest at noon. Uh -huh. For why should I be as one that turneth aside by the flocks of thy companions? Go ahead and read. If thou know not, O thou fairest among women, go thy way forth by the footsteps of the flock and feed thy kids beside the shepherd's tent. Well, that is good. Now, so he said they made me the keeper of the vineyard. Mm. And the keeper of the vineyard said, I am black. But comely, oh ye do. This is an Israelite. This is Jesus, the Israelite mm -hmm. that we are reading about here. Let's go and look at another thing. Let's go to Daniel chapter 7. And we're going to read just one verse. We're going to get a little bit of a description mm -hmm. of Jesus here. Daniel chapter 7, and we're going to read verse 9. Daniel 7 and 9. Daniel 7 and 9. Remember the definition we read for the Negro earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, it had the... Wood had the, 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 the the lips and the, and, the and, and the flat nose and the and the woolly hair. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit of a description of Jesus that we are reading about. Then we're gonna go in Revelation and read it again. Start reading at verse nine. Go ahead and read. I beheld till the thrones were cast down. Go ahead. And the ancient of days did sit, uh -huh. whose garment was white as snow. Now he said the thrones was cast down, and the ancient of days sit, and his garment was white as snow. Go ahead and read. And the hair of his head like the pure wool. And the hair of his head was like the pure wool, it said, mm -hmm. didn't it? Go ahead and finish that verse. His throne was like the fiery flame, uh -huh. and his wheels as burning fire. Now this is Jesus that we are reading about, and my point for reading this is to let you know it is how it mm -hmm. was like the wool. Right. Let's go and read it again. Let's go this time, Revelation chapter 1, and we're going to pick it up at verse 12. We're just making our point. We're just laying out all the evidence mm -hmm. to make our point. That's right. Because you need to understand who the real Israel light is. Revelations chapter 1, and we'll pick it up at verse 12. 1 and 12. Okay, when you get it, go ahead and read. And I turned to see the voice that spake with me, uh -huh. and being turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Now, this is John. He said, I turned to see the voice that spake with me, and when I turned, I saw seven golden candlesticks. Go ahead and read. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man. Now, who is the Son of Man? That is Jesus. Right. But notice this brief description that is going to give you of Jesus. Go ahead, read on. Clothed with a garment down to the foot, uh -huh. and girded about the paps with a golden girdle. Go ahead. His head and his hands were like were, were white like wool. Well, it says his head and his hair was white. Like wool, it said, mm -hmm, didn't it? That's right. Go ahead and read on. As white as snow. Uh-huh. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Go ahead. And his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace. Now, it said, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they had been burned in a furnace. You burn some brass in a furnace and see what color it's going to come out. That's right. You understand what I'm saying? Lord gave you enough mm -hmm. to let you know that you know what color Jesus is. Mm -hmm. But then we know that he's an Israelite, and we know already that the Israelites look like the Egyptians That's right. because Jesus looked just like any other Israelite of his day. That's right. He didn't look any different from any other Israelite of his day. What verse are we? That's the uh, 15. Did you finish that 15? In his voice, as the sound of many waters. Now, let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 2, and we'll pick it up at verse... Uh, 13, Matthew chapter 2, and we'll begin reading at verse 13. You had the Egyptians. They were a dark race of people. Then you had the, Egypt, uh, the Israelites. They were a dark race of people. So now if you wanted to hide an Israelite, where would you hide him at? You'd hide him among the people that look like him, right? That's right.
Herod sought to kill Jesus when he was born. And this is what the Lord said to his parents to do with him. Matthew chapter 2 and began reading at verse 13, 2 and 13. Okay, go ahead and read. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, mm -hmm. Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. Wait a minute. Now, if Jesus looked anything like them pictures you've been looking at all of your life, why would you take him? You're trying to hide him now to keep Pharaoh from killing him. Why would you take him and hide him among a dark people? That wouldn't make no sense at all, would it? You understand what I'm saying? You got a man that looked like a Caucasian. And you need to hide him. You understand what I'm saying? You will not take him among a dark people, would you? Because he would stand out like a sore thumb. But if you wanted to hide him, where would you hide him among? A people that look like him. That's right. So now the Lord said, take the young child and flee down into Egypt. Back up and read that again. And when they were departed, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream, saying, uh -huh. Arise and take the young child and his mother and flee into Egypt. Go ahead. And be thou there until I bring thee word, for Herod will seek the young child to destroy him. So now, you know, he had him to take him down into Egypt among a people that look like him so that he would not stand out. You understand what I'm saying? And that lets you know that Joseph and Mary, they had to be a dark race of people as well. Mm -hmm. That's right. They were Israelite. Mm -hmm. You know, Joseph came out of the lineage of David, mm -hmm. and, and uh, Mary came out of the lineage of David as well. Mm -hmm. They were Israelites, and they had an Israelite baby, so they took him and hid him among a dark race of people. Go ahead and read. What verse are 14. Go ahead and read. When he arose, he took the young child and his mother by night and departed into Egypt uh -huh. and was there until the death of Herod, Go ahead. that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, uh -huh. Out of Egypt have I called my son. Go ahead and read. Then Herod, when he saw that he was mocked of the wise man, was exceeding wroth mm -hmm. and sent forth and slew all the children that were in Bethlehem mm -hmm. and in all the coast thereof from two years old and under according to the time which he had diligently inquired of the wise men. So now, you know, here you have Jesus, and he was so, uh, and, and uh, his parents was told to take him down into Egypt mm -hmm. and hide him there among a dark people, mm -hmm. which makes sense. Mm -hmm. You're going to hide a dark person among dark people. That's right. They're going to hide him among other people that don't look like him. Mm -hmm. But Jesus was an Israelite, and his parents, they were Israelites. That's right. And the Egyptians, they were a dark race of people, so you had them among a dark race of people. That makes sense. Now, let's go to uh, Luke chapter 21, and we'll pick it up at verse 20. Show you what Jesus said was going to happen to this dark race of people. Luke chapter 21. And we're going to pick it up at verse 20, 21 and 20. See, all this we need to show you in order to identify who Israel is. Because you got to remember one thing. Your history ain't never been told you. Never. Only part of your history ever been told you is your slave history some 400 years ago. You know, as if you just dropped out the sky 400 years ago. You don't have a history and a culture that goes back like everybody else. You know, like that was the beginning of your history some 400 years ago when you was brought to this land and scattered into all other lands in the bondage. But your history goes back like everybody else. But your history has been distorted. And I'm going to show you when it became distorted. Let's start reading here in Luke chapter 21 and pick it up at verse 20, 21 and 20. Go ahead and read. And when you shall see Jerusalem combined with armies, uh -huh. then know that the desolation thereof is not. Now, skip down to uh, verse 23. Go ahead and read. 
But woe unto them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. Uh -huh. For there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. Now, who is this people? That, that's the Israelites. And Jesus is saying that there would be great distress in the land and wrath up on the Israelites. Go ahead and read on. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. He said they would fall by the edge of the sword. Go ahead and read. And shall be led away captive into all nations. And they would be led away captive, it said, into all nations. So now, if you're looking for the real Israelites, you have to find a people mm -hmm. that have been led away captive into all nations. Not migrated. Mm -hmm. The people that the world acknowledged as Jews, were they led away captive into all nations? Well, what about us? Were we led away captive into all nations? Yes, yes we were. What, what you need to understand is who fits the description mm -hmm. that the Bible gives for Israel? That's right. That's right. Israel's supposed to be a dark race of people. You're a dark race of people. Right. Israel supposed to be led away captive into all nations. You were led away captive into all nations. And notice how long it said. Go ahead and read. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles uh -huh. until the times of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Now, you know when the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled? At the second coming of Jesus. Right. So Israel will not be in the land until the second coming of Jesus. Mm -hmm. They were led away captive, and they will not be in the land until the second coming of Jesus. Right. Another people going to be in the land. Let's go, to, uh, let's go and read something uh, from a history book. Mm -hmm. You're almost done with history. Show you when that happened, that Israel was led away captive. Mm -hmm. We read from the last two million years, and we read from page 87. Go ahead and read. Faith survives the dispersion. Go ahead. The crucifixion of Jesus about A.D. 30 uh -huh. did not end the resistance to the Roman occupation. Go ahead. In 70, when the country... Wait a minute, in 70 A.D. it mm -hmm. said, go ahead and read. When the country was again in a state of revolt, uh -huh. Jerusalem, the holy city, became the core of the resistance to the Romans. Go ahead and read. Titus, the son of Emperor Vespasian, uh -huh. proceeded to lay siege to Jerusalem. Go ahead. The city fell and the inhabitants were enslaved in their thousands. Wait a minute, what happened to the inhabitants of Jerusalem? They were enslaved. They were enslaved, it said. Mm -hmm. In their thousands. In other words, led away captive. That's what that's what enslaved mean to be led away captive, right? That's right. Well, Jesus said that Israel would be led away captive mm -hmm. into all nations until the time of the Gentile be fulfilled. That's right. What happened in 70 AD? This was around 30 AD that Jesus made that prediction. Mm -hmm. What happened in 70 AD? They were led away captive. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said, until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. In other words, until his second coming. Because that's when the time of the Gentiles will be fulfilled. Now, let's go to, uh, let's go to uh, 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 read something from another history book. And it is called The Sarcophagus of Ancient Civilization. Because I'm going to show you something else that happened in 70 A.D. Find page uh, 372. Show you what else happened in 70 A.D. Remember, you had uh, the Israelites, didn't you? Mm -hmm. And you had the Edomites. I want you to start reading. We're going to save time. Uh, well, just, just start reading right there. Okay. What's underlined in red and then read what's underlined in red right there. Okay, go ahead and read. Henceforth, the Idumeans were reckoned as Jews, mm -hmm. and their land was counted as one of the 11 tetrarchies of Judea. Now, who is, who is the Idumeans? They are the Edomites. Mm -hmm. That is another name for the Edomites. They are the Idumeans. So now Israel, they was to be led away captive, mm -hmm. and they did in 70 A.D. Now, 
Let's find out what happened to the Edomites, or as they are also called, the Idumians. Go ahead and read. But the union between them and the Jews proved of little blessing. Uh -huh. Rather, they became an element of weakness to the Jews. Go ahead. And in the moment of need, they treacherously betrayed them to Rome. Now, this was your brother who said they betrayed the Rome mm -hmm. because they sided with the Romans in 70 AD mm -hmm. when they came down there and took Israel out. Go ahead and read on. By nature, they were cruel and barbarous, fierce and turbulent. Uh -huh. at, the time of, at the time, the Romans under Titus besieged Jerusalem in 70 AD. In 70 AD. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, in 70 AD, that's when Israel got taken out, right? Mm -hmm. Now, what happened to the Edomites? Go ahead and read. The Idumeans, uh -huh. along with the Zalot party, uh -huh. early joined in the rebellion against the folk. Go ahead. Through the influence of John of Giscalia, mm -hmm. as Josephus informs us, 20,000 Idumeans were allowed to access access to the holy city uh -huh. only to fill the city with robbery and bloodshed. Go ahead. They spared nobody. Go ahead. The outer temple was completely covered with blood. Uh-huh. 8,500 perished there in one day. Now, this is Edom that you are reading about mm -hmm. here. And this is what he did to Israel. Go ahead, read on. But the rage of the Idumeans was not confined to the temple precincts. Uh -huh. They betook themselves to the city and plundered every house and slew everyone they met. Now, Read that that's on the line and read. With Go the, ahead and read. With the tragic fall of Jerusalem, the Idumeans as a nation passed off the stage of history and disappeared entirely from human sight. So now you got a whole nation of people mm -hmm. just, just an evaporated. Disappeared from the page. And, and so happened, it's sort of ironic that at the same time, mm -hmm. Israel was scattered into bondage in all nations. That is the same time that Idumia disappeared from the pages of history. That's right. You know where they are? Let's go to uh, Obadiah. And we're going to pick it up at verse 8, Obadiah. Okay. It's only one chapter, so we're going to pick it up at verse 8. It's a little book over near Jonah, mm -hmm. between Jonah and Amos. Mm -hmm. It's only one chapter. This is what happened to our doom. Because Israel, they've been led away captive. Mm -hmm. It said, into all nations until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Right. So they ain't in the land. Israel cannot be in the land until the Lord make his second coming. Mm -hmm. So that means that another people got to be there that have taken on your name and they have taken on your identity mm -hmm. because the real Israelites can't be there. Jesus said, led away captive into all nations until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. Okay, Obadiah, verse 8. Go ahead and read. Shall I not in that day, said the Lord, even destroy the wise men out of Edom uh -huh. and understanding out of the mouth of Esau? Go ahead and read. And thy mighty men, O T men, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the Mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. Go ahead and read. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, uh -huh. and thou shalt be cut off forever. And we read about his violence against his brother Jacob, mm -hmm. didn't we? Go ahead and read on. And the day that thou stoodest on the other side, uh -huh. and the day that the strangers carried away captive his forces. Wait a minute, he said, and the day that strangers mm -hmm. carried away captive Israel's forces. Go ahead and read on. And foreigners entered into his gates. And foreigners, it said, entered into his gates. Go ahead and read on. And cast lots upon Jerusalem. Uh -huh. Even thou was as one of them. He said, even you was as one of them. There was others that, that got a plot of that land too. But he said to Edom, you was as one of them. So what happened to Edom? Did he disappear from the pages of uh -huh. history? No. You know what he did? Israel got carried away captive, mm -hmm. and he slid into Israel's land, That's right. took over their land, mm -hmm. and took over their identity. That's right. Now he's sitting there calling himself an Israelite. That's right. And the real Israelite have been scattered in the bondage, mm -hmm. and Edom is sitting there in your land with your identity. Go ahead and read on. 12. 
But thou shouldest not have looked on the day of thy brother in the day that he became a strange. Uh -huh. Neither shouldest thou have rejoiced over the children of Judah in the day of their destruction. Go ahead. Neither shouldest thou have spoken proudly in the day of distress. Uh -huh. Thou shouldest not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. When was the day of their calamity? When they got taken out captive. Mm -hmm. And he's saying to Edom, you should not have entered into the gate of my people in the day of their calamity. Right. Go ahead and read on. Yeah. Thou shouldest not have looked on their affliction in the day of their calamity, uh -huh. nor have laid hands on their substance in the day of their calamity. See, Israel, Edom went in there, took over your land, mm -hmm. took over your substance, took over your everything. That's right. Now, everybody look at him as being the Israelite, mm -hmm. and they look at you as being whatever they decide to call you, mm -hmm. or whatever you decide to call you. Everybody is where they are supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Israel not supposed to be in the land till the second coming of Jesus, and they not there. Edom supposed to be there, and he is there. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read a little bit more. Neither shouldest thou have stood in the crossway to cut off those of his that did escape. Now, if there was some that would have escaped, it said you stood in the crossway. Go ahead and read on. Neither shouldest thou have delivered up those of his that did remain in the day of distress. Uh -huh. For the day of the Lord is near upon all the heathen. As thou hast done, it shall be done unto thee. Now, that is good. Let's run over place, and that's going to be it for today. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 28. We're going to read just a little bit of it. This is what had to happen to Israel when they would be led away captive. Deuteronomy chapter 28. The Lord said to Israel, if you obey my commandments, then all these blessings would come upon you. Mm -hmm. But he said, on the other hand, if you disobey my commandments, then all of these curses going to come upon you. Start reading at Deuteronomy 28 and verse 15. Go ahead and read. But it shall come to pass. Uh -huh. Now, this is strictly to Israel here. Mm -hmm. You know, I've seen ministers read this, and they try to include everybody in this. No, this is all about Israel here. Right. And this is what he's having Moses to say unto them. It shall come to pass. Go ahead and read on. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, uh -huh. to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, uh -huh. that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now he's saying to Israel, if you don't obey these commandments, then all these curses are going to come up on you, and they will overtake you. Go ahead and read on. Curse shall thou be in the city, uh -huh. and curse shall thou be in the field. Go ahead, read. Curse shall be the, thy basket and thy store. Uh -huh. Curse shall be the fruit of thy body and the fruit of thy land, Go ahead. the increase of thy kind and the flocks of thy sheep. Uh -huh. Curse shall thou be when thou comest in, and curse shall thou be when thou goest out. Now you say you're going to be cursed when you come in, you're going to be cursed when you go out. You're going to be cursed in the city, and you're going to be cursed in the field. Go ahead, read on. The Lord shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke. Uh-huh. And all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do. Now everything Israel set them hand to do. Mm. Lord said you're going to be cursed. Why? Because you refuse to obey the commandments of the Lord. Go ahead and read on. Until thou be destroyed. Uh-huh. Until thou perish quickly because of the wickedness of thy doings whereby thou hast forsaken me. Now skip down to verse 25. Go ahead and read. The Lord shall call thee. Cause thee to be smitten before thine enemies. Now he's saying to Israel, you will be smitten before your enemies. Go ahead and read on. Thou shalt go out one way against them uh -huh. and flee seven ways before them. Go ahead. And shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. You know what remove means? That means somebody going to come and get you mm -hmm. and take you somewhere. Not migrate. That's right. You know, the man that the world called Israel or Israelite, mm -hmm. he migrated right. through all the kingdoms of the earth. But how did Israel get into all the kingdoms of the earth? They were removed. That's right. Somebody came and got you and took you somewhere. You know why they did it? Because you refused to obey the commandments of the Lord your God. That's right. Didn't have nothing to do with the Gentiles. That's right. It was all about you and your God. Right. You being disobedient to the commandments of the Lord your God. That's why Israel got kicked out of the land. Didn't have nothing to do with the Gentiles. That's right. Skip down to uh, verse 29. Go ahead and read. 
And thou shalt grope at noonday uh -huh. as the blind gropeth in darkness. Go ahead. And thou shalt not prosper in thy way. Wait a minute. He said, Israel, you will not prosper in your way. Well, a man that the world called uh, uh, Israelite a Jew, he's very prosperous, right. isn't he? That's right. But look at you. That's right. You got a couple that to slip through the crack. But Israel as a whole, they are not prospering in their way. But then the Lord pronounced that upon the real Israelites. Go ahead and read a little bit more. And thou shalt be only oppressed and uh, spoiled evermore. He said, you shall be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. You know what spoil means? That means somebody always robbing you out of something. You ain't got nothing, but they want that. He just said you would not prosper in your way, didn't he? Right. But then he turned around and said you would be spoiled. In other words, you got $2 and I want it. Because they always trying to figure out a way to rob you. Why? Because you are under the curse, Israel. Because you refuse to obey the commandments of the Lord your God. Skip down now to uh, verse 43. Go ahead and read. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high, and uh, thou shalt come down very low. Now, when you be carried away captive, in whatever land you find yourself, Israel, the stranger going to get up very high, and you're going to come down very low. In other words, he's going to be on the top, and you're going to be on the bottom. I don't have to tell you who on the bottom. You know. You might not want to say it, but you know who on the bottom. Go ahead and read. He shall lay unto thee. And thou shalt not lend to him. In other words, Israel, you would not be doing any lending. But the man that they call Jew or Israelite, he is the one that does all the lending, isn't he? That's right. Every time you sit down in a bank to take out a mortgage to buy you a little hut somewhere, you are sitting before an Edomite. And if he's not looking you dead in the eye, he is the one in the back room calling the shots. He is the one that does all of the lending. That's right. But the Lord said to Israel, you will not do any lending. You will do all of the borrowing. The evidence says again that you are the Israelite. Because you can't loan nobody nothing. That's right. If you need some money, don't go to an Israelite. That's right. Because... He, he'll, he, he'll, he'll probably beat you asking. <laughs> you about to ask him for $2. He said, man, can you loan me three? Because <laughs> you ain't got nothing. You That's understand right. what I'm saying? Why you don't have anything is because the Lord put these curses up on you. He said, when you be led away captive, then this is the conditions that you will find yourself in. Who do these conditions fit? If you're trying to really figure out who Israel, just find out who got the curses on them, Amen. and you have discovered Israel. That's right. Go ahead and read a little bit more. He shall be the head, and thou shall be the tail. And he will be the head, and you're going to be the tail. And everybody else is the head, and you are the tail. Go ahead and read on. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee, uh -huh. and shall pursue thee, Go ahead. and overtake thee. Till thou be destroyed, because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord thy God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded thee. See what he said? Why are these curses going to come up on you and overtake you? Because you refuse to obey the commandments of the Lord your God. Was this just for that generation back in Moses' time? Listen to what it said here. Go ahead and read on. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and now, for a wonder. Now, you know what a sign is, don't you? A sign is something that points out something. He said these curses would be up on you for a sign and for a wonder. For how long? Go ahead and read on. And upon thy seed forever and up on thy seed forever now you you are not the people that was back there then but you are the seed of the people that was back there then so again if you want to find out who the real Israelite is just find the people that had these curses up on them find the people that was led away captive into all nations find the people that can't do no lending, have to do all of the bottom. Find a people that's on the bottom and not on the top. Find a people that have these curses on them. Skip down to uh, verse 63. Go ahead and read. 
And it shall come to pass uh -huh. that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do do you good. Well, he said it would come to pass as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good. Because he did rejoice over Israel to do them good. Mm -hmm. And he would have continued to do them good if they had obeyed the commandments. Because all you had to do is just read up further in this uh, 28th chapter of Deuteronomy. Mm -hmm. He told you what he was going to do for Israel if they obeyed the commandments. Mm -hmm. All these blessings would come up on them. But he said, now, if you disobey, all these curses going to come up on you. Now, he says here, as the Lord rejoiced over you to do you good. Go ahead and read on. And to multiply you. And to multiply you. Go ahead. So the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught. Who going to destroy you? The Gentile? No. Mm -hmm. The Lord, Lord said he going to destroy right. you. Why? Because you refuse to obey the commandments of the Lord. Go ahead and read on. And you shall be plucked from off the land whether thou goest to possess it. And you will be taken from off that land that God gave you, the land of Canaan, and this is what will happen to you. Go ahead and read on. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other. Well, ain't, didn't Jesus say that's what was going to happen to uh, Israel? Right. Didn't, ain't that what he, said? That's what he said? They would be led away captive into all nations. That's right. Israel didn't obey so they were led away captive into all nations. That's right. You will be plucked from off the land that thou go up to possess it. Go ahead and read on. And there thou shalt serve other gods. And you will be led away. And he said, and there, in these other nations, you will serve other gods. That is what Israel is doing right, right today. They are serving other gods. You're not serving the God of this Bible. Mm -hmm. I don't care how many Bibles you got in your house or how many Bibles you see in the church that you go to. Mm -hmm. You are not serving the God of the Bible because the God of the Bible said keep the seventh day as right. the Sabbath day, didn't That's he? Right. But the God that you're serving said do the first day. Mm -hmm. The God of the Bible said, keep his dietary law. Mm -hmm. The God that you're serving said that you ain't got to keep no dietary law, just whatever you eat, just pray over it first. Mm -hmm. So what God are you serving? You are serving another God. Because mm -hmm. if you had been serving the true and living God, then you wouldn't have had these curses on you. Finish that verse. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, uh -huh. even wood and stone. Even wood and stone. Go ahead and read that next verse. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease. Now he said, when you be scattered among these nations, life will not be well for you, Israel. Among these nations, you will find no ease. That's why your plight is what it is, people. Because God did not send you to these nations for you to be blessed. He sent you to these nations for you to be cursed, Israel. Mm -hmm. That's why Israel always whining about equality. He didn't send you there to be equal. That's right. That's right. There, there is no equality for you, Israel, That's in right. these nations. That's why? Right. Because you refuse to obey the commandments of the Lord your God. Go ahead and finish that up. Neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest, uh -huh. but the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. Now, again, we see what had to happen to the real Israelites. Mm -hmm. And what do, uh, and, and, and who fits this description that the Bible gives for Israel? We do. Mm -hmm. Nobody else. Right. Don't nobody else fits this description. Nobody else was led away captive into all nations. This only happened to us. We had to be on the bottom, and the stranger had to be on the top. We had to do the borrowing, and the stranger had to do the lending. All these conditions that God described, and there are more, and we'll get to those next week. But it is very clear from the description that the Bible gave for Israel that we are the Israelites. That's the right. real Israelites are a dark race of people, and we indeed are the Israelites. We are not Negro colored and black mm -hmm. that's right and you are not african either that's right you understand what i'm saying that's right. we are the ones that's always trying to connect ourselves to africans but they don't you don't never see them trying to connect themselves to you no. no sir you know why because they know who they are and they know who you are too that's right. you are the one that was blinded that's right to your heritage that's and right. to and, and, and to 
uh, your lineage as to where you came mm -hmm. from and all. You are the one that was blinded That's to right. that. But when you pick up the real history book of mm -hmm. the Israelites, which is the Bible, then you can find out who you are. That's you right. You can find out that you are the Israelites of the Bible. That's Thank right, you, brother. and I hope you learned something.